Jared here from Sound Guitar Lessons. This lesson is piece number two out of my series, Seven Easy Classical Guitar Songs for Beginners. This series is an introduction to classical guitar by teaching actual pieces of music, very simple beginner level pieces, and by giving you step-by-step -step exercises for how to work on each of them from the ground up. To get the most out of this series, I encourage you to start from part one. There is a link in the description to a playlist of all the videos uh, in this whole series. So go back to part one. There's some important introductory information. At the same time, if you have some basics down, then each of these lessons in the series will also totally stand on its own, so feel free to keep watching. Each piece in this series features a different technique, training, and element of expression needed to bring the music alive, which then you can apply to any other piece of music. And I will also do a harmonic analysis of this piece and every piece in this series. If you're wanting an introduction to classical guitar with some easy, playable, and enjoyable pieces to walk away with, then you are in the right place. You can download the sheet music and classical guitar tabs for all of the pieces in this series for free. They're inside my solo guitar arrangement pack. Just click on the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com moon to get my arrangement pack for free. In this lesson, I'll teach you the second piece out of seven in this series, and we will talk about how to take advantage of bringing out the melody, separating it from the other voices to be more expressive. Let's get into it. I'm going to perform the piece, give you a demonstration so you can hear what it sounds like all together. We're going to go over a couple of pieces of information about the sheet music that I want to point out to you. Then we will go through our five exercises for this piece, how to play it step by step from the ground up, kind of breaking up the elements of it so we can piece it together. We'll then talk about our element of expression for this video, which is bringing out the melody, separating the melody from other voices to make it sing better. I'll give you a little bonus tip after that about how to end a piece of music on the classical guitar without making it sound abrupt. Then we'll do a harmonic analysis, and at the very end I will give you a slow demonstration that is meant to be practiced along with, so you can work up to playing along with me and have that be your goal, which is which helps our practicing a lot to have a specific goal in mind. Just a reminder, you can get all of this sheet, the sheet music from this video and all of the the lessons in this series in my solo guitar arrangement pack with the link in the top of the description. This piece is a French piece by Adrian Leroy uh, from the 1500s. And so anything from that time period we can assume was originally a lute piece because the modern guitar was not invented yet. Uh, this is clearly a French name. I won't lie, I practiced pronouncing the name of it, uh, which I will probably still botch, but Bon du Poitou. <laughs> is kind of close, maybe. So anyway, I tried. Bon du potu. Um, and let's get in now to just performing the piece. Here's a full demonstration of it. I really like this one. Let's look at the sheet music here. A couple things to point out. One, it's in 6-8 time. So this means there are six beats per measure and there are six eighth notes. Six beats, top number is the number of beats, bottom number is the type of note duration. So six eighth notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, you can see there, uh, that is the time signature. The next thing I want to tell you about the sheet music is that it's using something called a pedal point. Just to point out, we're going to talk about this more in our harmonic analysis, but the open D string is what's going on in the harmony below the melody the entire time, and that is called a pedal point. So just something to take note of in the sheet music. Uh, fingering in this one, I will say, you can always take it as a suggestion, The right, any type of fingering. Um, I had a classical guitar teacher that said when they got a new piece of music, the first thing they did is white out all the fingering suggestions because they didn't want to be suggested and want to find figure it out for themselves. And a lot of players don't pay attention to, they'll just intuitively use their plucking hand, their right hand for um, the the selection that they need for, for plucking instead of adhering to or reading these letters. So 
the reason I say that it's important because my demonstration was not adhering to these. I wasn't paying attention to them at all. However, they're very helpful. They're usually good suggestions if you don't know what to use in your right hand. Index, middle, index, middle. So if in doubt and if you want to slowly work on exactly what's suggested in a piece of sheet music, please do. It doesn't always mean that the suggestion is the best. If it's something's not working for you, switch up what you're doing, whether it's left hand fingering or right hand fingering. So fingerings are always just suggestions. I want to point out here we have repeat signs. So the double dots here next to the two bar lines, that means you repeat back to here. So you play, get there, bounce back to the beginning. Second time you pass through it, and then we have it again. So at the end, you come back here and you can hear that, of course, that's exactly what I did in my demonstration. And lastly, I want to point out that this has a pickup measure. So this is one beat only, and then it goes in. That's called a pickup measure, so it's not a full measure yet. It's not. This would be measure one, and this is the pickup measure. And the thing to take note of here is that because of this pickup measure, it shortens the last bar uh, before the repeat happens. So this is missing a beat because you're going to play this and then go back to that. Um, so that makes between this and this a complete measure and keeps things flowing along nicely. That all being said, let's work on our exercises to play this step by step from the ground up. Should be fun. You'll see that my exercises for each piece in this series are there. They differ from each other uh, because there are so many ways that we can work on the building blocks and the elements of a piece of music to make it way easier for us to play in completion. The first exercise for this one is that I want us to review the scale that is used in the melody. Okay, so it's going to be this open third string, then second fret, then open second string, first fret, third fret, open top string, first fret, third fret. This is what I want you to play first, just as a scale. What this is, is a G mixolydian scale. So this is during a time period, this composition, where modes were used in composition. And this is, we'll talk about it in the harmonic analysis portion later, but this is not traditional functional harmony like we usually think of it. Uh, this is very modal, this piece of music. So this is the G mixolydian scale. It's not G major, it's G mixolydian, and that's the difference between those. But regardless of what you think of it as, or don't worry about the theory if you're not interested, just be able to play the note selection. I find that to be really helpful. It's not something that a lot of um, classical training recommends necessarily, but I think it should be because it, to get your fingers around, oh, this is the har this is the tonality that the melody is coming from, that the piece is being born from. So we kind of get used to hearing it, playing it, seeing it on the fretboard, our fingers kind of hitting those correct notes. So I like to review the scale that things come from. And as an improviser, that's something I'm very used to doing because then I'll improvise with those notes also, not in this setting right now, but it helps also with arrangements and pieces. Exercise number two is I want you to play the melody rhythm on the open strings one two and three so open string this melody rhythm we just want to really get it down so ba, da, 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 da. you can go way slower if you want one two three one two three one two three four five six okay and let's get it to where we go and then switch strings So we have an opportunity there to work on our security, our tone, our time, all that stuff, switching. If we can't do that easily, it's not going to happen in the piece of music. That's how I like to work things up and how I like to build up exercises for pieces. Let's do exercise three, which is playing just the melody of the A section, just the melody. So... And if you're really serious about this, I always recommend being able to do something at least three times in a row without a mistake. So that, three times in a row without a mistake, I've talked about it many times. I have guitar picks sitting next to me and I slide them over to get three in a row. If you're a classical player only, then you probably don't have picks sitting around, but um, I have a little app that I'll make a tick mark for, I've done two, I've done three, I've done four. And so you want to work on that melody by itself. And this is very common and this is 
commonly recommended in classical guitar training that you do want to play the melody by itself and you do want to play the bass line by itself of pieces to hear them and feel them separately so get that down the next exercise you probably can guess is going to be the melody of the b section <laughs> there and so take your time get it down get used to it get it in your ears exercise five is going to be the melody rhythm on the open strings one two and three with the pedal tone in between so this thing that we did already we're going to add this Okay, so I like rotating through them, but you get the point. You want to do exactly the feel of the piece with the open strings. Just play D with the thumb and then rotate through. The reason we rotate through is we're not trying to play the piece only with the right hand. We're trying to get used to how it feels to switch between those strings, which is going to happen in the melody. And that's it for this one. Now, exercise six is piece it all together. I always call the final exercise an exercise because I want to take us little baby steps towards where we finally are can piece it together into the piece of music. Now, when you work on it from the beginning or in the way that you would think that you just jump in and work on a piece, you're going to have much more of a solid foundation to piece everything together. And I think it's fun to do those exercises too, but I'll play a little piece of it again. The players that are most expert and, and most professional and most confident and uh, make the fewest mistakes are the players that pause and go back to the core building blocks and fundamentals of things whenever it's needed. So we're doing that kind of, if, if there's some sort of insecurity in the right hand, oh, pause, work on that for a while, work on just that thing, build it back up, put it back into the piece. So that's why we're kind of doing that from the beginning in all of these. Let's talk about the element of expression for this piece, which is bringing out the melody. This is a great piece of music to work on bringing out the melody with. So simply, once you can play a little bit of it, I want you to try to, Try to have the melody be nice and strong without that corresponding with the thumb digging in as well, right? So independence of the velocity, the intensity, the attack of your right hand or plucking hand. I say right hand or plucking hand because some players are left-handed, but you get what I mean. Um, so we don't want it to sound like... part one of this series we talked about dynamics it's similar principle here but now it's all meshed together that whole feel is reliant on this D not being too heavy and the melody feeling independent so that is our item to work on for this Here's your bonus tip for this piece, and I did it. I've done it in all these pieces. It's a tried and true way to end the classical music so it doesn't sound awkward, either just fading out forever or kind of stopping abruptly. So I'll go to the very bottom last three measures. And then this is the, the fade out. So it's all, almost every classical guitar player I've seen does this. So you would play, it's ringing instead of just letting it sit or, you know, when someone does that, that's not a great way to end a piece. So you put your hand, easy enough as you see me do it, it's, it's easy to emulate. Put your palm on the other side of the bridge and then slowly roll it over and you get a little fade out. That's a great way to end a piece and, and um, pretty much end every piece I play that way. And that's how I see other players do it as well. So again, you'll you'll get used to not just ending a piece like that. And uh, that's going to feel weird and kind of throw people off. So that's how you end a piece. And you'll see me do that in all the demonstrations of this whole series. Let's go on to our harmonic analysis.
The first thing I want to point out with our harmonic analysis is the form. So it's not a harmonic analysis, but an analysis. Uh, if the form is really obvious, I'm going to point it out in these pieces. Uh, this would be the A section right here, and this would be the B section. So an, uh, a the A section happens twice, the B section happens twice, a common form for pieces of music, A, A, B, B. Um, excellent way to structure your phrasing if you're composing or improvising and being exposed to composed pieces like this even very simple ones is so great if you are an improviser or songwriter or anything like this you can start to think about the structure of how organized simple and catchy melodies are uh, a a b b is a great phrasing structure i have a whole playlist on phrasing related videos i'll put a link to that in the description for you if you are interested in it our next thing to analyze here is just to remind us again that we're that this is called a pedal point and it is on the note d but we are in the scale of or kind of the key of g mixolydian so a pedal point in classical music and jazz music uses it as well, is very commonly on the fifth note of the key or the scale. Okay, so we're, our root is G, but one, two, three, four, five, the five of the key is D, and that's the pedal point. The pedal point is very often on the five because it supports almost anything that can happen over the top of it. Uh, so we are in G mixolydian mode, and that's really kind of a cool sound. It's almost, it has almost like a Gregorian chant kind of Tonal, tonality vibe to it. Uh, not the rhythm of this, but just the modal factor of it. Um, with pedal points and modal music like this, and thinking of it as G mixolydian, you can think of it as like a G7 chord if you're used to thinking that way. What's happening often is that the melody is going in and out of the harmony. So we have the pedal point there and the pedal point is considered a chord tone during say like the g7 chord this could be considered the flat seven of g7 this could be considered the five of g7 this could all be considered part of that harmony well this right here um might be considered like a c chord but that's not in the chord anymore so it's like a chord tone here it's a non-chord tone here a non-chord tone and then goes back to being a chord tone so it's this note that stays the same but kind of fluctuates between being consonant and dissonant even though it's staying the same based on what's happening above it. There's an alternate way that you can interpret the harmony here where you could try to, you could think of it as more traditional harmony if you kind of look at notes that are happening here, like, oh, that is maybe a chord tone and a chord tone and a passing tone of D minor. So this could be right there, that first measure. That could be D minor. Okay, so then maybe it goes to um, after the, or this could be D minor and this could be G7. So, so it'd be da, 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 da. Uh, you hear how that kind of works there. D minor, G7, C, that's like a two, five, one in functional harmony. That's possible to think of it that way, even though the pedal point is going the whole time. And the pedal point is what makes it sound especially modal and kind of eerie and interesting. So that's my harmonic analysis for what it's worth. Just put, just sharing that stuff because I love to make sure I'm thinking of some kind of um, having some kind of relationship with what is going on in the harmony, in the theory, understanding of music, rather than just purely playing it. That helps me a lot. If you're not interested in that, you don't have to be. That's totally fine. You can just work on playing stuff that sounds cool. Um, I will do the slow demonstration for you to practice along with coming up very soon. Just a reminder that you can download this sheet music for free. It's in my solo guitar arrangement pack. Uh, all pieces of music that can be played just on the guitar by itself. Some of them are quite hard, some of them are straightforward like this, and all of these pieces in this series are in it. You can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon to get that, or just click the link in the top of the description on YouTube. And let's do the demonstration now that's meant for you to practice along with and work towards um, at a nice slow tempo so we can play together. Here's my slow demonstration for you to play along with. I'm gonna to count to four and then you come in with me on five and six. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, etc. but I'm not gonna say five, six. Here we go. One, two, three, four.
practice your fade out technique that we just learned there. Great job. That's it for this lesson. I post a new lesson video every single week. I hope to see you in the next one, and I hope to see you in more videos in this classical series. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and happy practicing.